Hello guys, my name is Arun and welcome to my channel. This series is a series of tutorials on scientific programming using Python. Now in this tutorial, we will be looking at how to extract data from NetCDF files. Okay. Now, uh, as a prerequisite, uh, as a prerequisite uh, to extract data from NetCDF files, you need to have the library NetCDF4 installed. And how to do is that? It's simple. Uh, let me go to one of the previous sessions. Okay. Now, if you want to install, I mean, uh, this uh, this kind of this is actually an installation uh, pro demo for others. Okay, so I'm just giving you guys a demo. Of, uh, this might be useful as of now. So if you guys want to do uh, install NetCDF, what you do is then open your with if your internet connection is on, switch on your internet connection, then open a command prompt if you are in Windows or a shell like this. Um, yeah, like this. And type the com type the command conda install netcdf four like this conda install netcdf four. Press enter. You will get something like fetching package metadata and everything with the internet connection going on. As of now, my internet connection is down. Okay, as of now, my internet connection is down. But what it says is what it says is that it says that you have to get uh, certain packages like these. Like ARB curl, net, libnet CDF4, and everything. The, some packages have to be installed, some packages have to be updated, and everything. Pre so it asked me, like, proceed to S, yes, present, press yes, and click enter. And it'll say it'll fetching packages like that. What? The inter okay, fine, the internet is working. So I didn't know about that. Really? Ah, good, the internet is working. Fine. Now, what it says is that it will just uh, go to the internet, go to the internet, and uh, fetch the packages one by one like this. Okay. I think this will take a little. I think this will take some time. So what I'm going to do is that. Uh, wait. I think this is this is the big this is a big package I suppose so. Okay, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to pause the vi uh, Okay, hold, if you just guys just hold on, this will download everything in one shot. And uh, for netcdf4, you need this library package called as libnetcdf. That's like the ba uh, one of basic netcdf library. And that will just upload download everything that's required. And this is where our file which has to be done, our library to be downloaded is used is getting downloaded. Okay, and then I think we still have pip setup tools and uh, wheel to be downloaded. I guess those are short ones. Yeah, setup tools is almost over. Wheel is over, and then pip. I guess pip is a little big, but it will be, it'll be finished now. Okay. All right, uh, this is about to be over. Once the the packages are fetched. They like it all. The, it'll it'll extract all the packages and then unlink the unlink the packages and then relink the packages again and that's it. And with that, your library uh, libraries are installed. Okay, libraries are installed. And what it does is that it just it just updated the libraries. And if it's not present, it'll install new libraries along the way. That's it. Now this is how the log looks like. And if you were to go to the I mean, if you have to go how it's gone by like this, you will get the same thing, okay? And this is how a sim this is how a, a kind of a, uh, a sample out sample procedure looks like. If you just click conda install netcdf four, it'll get the values like these, and uh, it'll show this prompt, click yes, and then it'll fetch the data, extract, unlink, link, and does everything. This is how you do the installation of packages as well. This is how I, this is how you do netcdf4, but the same kind of a procedure is available uh, valid for all the other packages as well. Okay. Now with that, uh, with that we are ready with uh, we are ready with installing uh, packages using Conda, the uh, package manager in Python. Now what we'll do is that we will go to the extraction of netcdf files. Um, yeah okay so now that gone on the way what you need is that uh, you need to write this statement at the beginning 
from netcda4 import data set as dt okay. <coughs> sorry about that okay okay now little bit of a little bit about netcdf see netcdf is a kind of a compacted uh, network network data file used by uh, a d network data file used by people in atmospheric sciences oceanography and o o o oceanic sciences uh, earth scientists uh, earth, earth sciences and several other people okay sometimes you may get your satellite data as netcdf i'm not sure about that but if, if you guys are running some people who are running atmospheric modeling and ocean modeling they will be going with uh, using they will be going with uh, netcdf for getting their output results and all okay so it's one of the one one scientific package and uh, general people might not use generally some people might not use this but uh, for these people netcdfs are very good data packages okay so now what you have to do is that first you have to import the library using this command callers from netcdf4 import data set as dt so what i'm going to do is that if you copy this and paste this press enter now your netcdf4 library is available from that you are importing a class callers data set with the name callers dt now if i press dt now dt is actually a netcdf4 data set it's kind of like a dictionary it's kind of like a how do i put it it's kind of like a dictionary which has all the which has a lot of values in it okay and uh, we'll see how this goes by now with that it is ready and now since numpy is ready now we what we need is that we need a variable we need a file name so what i'm going to do i'm going to set the file name to be i can close this up i'm going to set the file name to be a uh, variable called as file str the file i'm going to use is nc file 2.nc and if i go over here <coughs> go over here in my data set i have a file called as nc file 2.nc and by the way guys if you guys want to do uh, do all of this job that i'm going to do over here what's i mean you can also do the same the thing is the thing is you can also do the same uh, what you have to do is that copy all the contents which i have over here okay copy all the contents which i have over here uh, that is available in the dropbox link i have given below and also in the github link i github link i mentioned you in the, mentioned you in, mentioned you in the series inter, series details playlist you ha guys have look at that how to get, get those data and work, work work about that okay work about that and there is available in the uh, dropbox link also so you guys check it out where you Uh, as per your choice and everything, so that's not a problem with that. So you can follow what I'm, whatever I'm doing. Okay, I'm taking this it's nc file dot two dot txt file name in this string, and then I'm passing, and then I'm using nc file, and then creating a data, uh, creating a netcdf object, or a netcdf dataset object called as nc file, as dt of file str file str comma read. Now what this does is that it opens th this command. the read data set i mean this class data set what it open, what it does is that it opens uh this file in readable format and it give it returns out uh, an ordered list or an netcdf object called as nc file okay now if i want to print all the netcdf uh, nc files that are available i need to use something called as nc file dot variable so what i do is that let me copy this command and paste it over here done Now let me clean all the variables over there. There's just there's just too many over here. I'll clean up the memory as well. Okay, let me do the previous option. Let, let's see here four. Okay, let me uh, file. Let me read the file string. Okay, let me read the nc file. Fine. Now this nc file is too big, so it may not come over here. But don't worry. If you want to know. type uh, if if you want to know is available type this print nc file dot variables if i do that okay print that pre check it out if i enter you just get a lot of data over here okay now i'll just show you the same data over here at the at here you'll get something similar to this okay if you have some other net cd net cd files you'll get something similar to this okay let me walk you guys through what's happening it says that uh, this netcdf4.variables collection is actually an ordered dictionary 
with uh, with lot of variables in there in the first variable first uh, okay so with uh, so it's uh, the first key is actually longitude longitude and it's a net it's set as a net cdf for variable of data type 30 uh, of data type float 32 and its unit is longitude okay and the units are degrees to east la la longitude name is longitude and the di dimensions are unlimited okay and the current unit is 360 the shape is it's a one dimensional array of shape 360 similarly you have an another la another variable called as latitude okay which is again float 32 degree uh, units is degrees north and uh, the name is full name is longitude long underscore name is long full name or long name it's longitude it's latitude here and its current shape is 131 it's a one time scenario of 181 entries and then you have a variable called as time it says that hovers since 99 uh, first okay what it says is that it just hovers since uh, for January 1st of 1990 to midday 12 a.m. 12 a.m. Okay, so the full time is like, full long name is time, and it follows Gregorian calendar or the calendar or the normal calendar that we use, and it's unlimited dimension. It has 31 entries so far, and like that, these are the some variables. And what it what it also has is that it has variable called as U10, which is actually nothing but uh, velocity, uh, velocity in the x y east west direction, east west di direction at 10 kilo 10 meters from the surface, at the 10 meter from the surface, okay, and its unit is meter per second, meter per second, and if you find the values and uh, if you have, I mean, you may have to use a scale factor and offset factor or something if necessary, but it's not treated as of now. And if, if there are any fill, if there are any missing values or some values which have been intentionally filled because they don't have any values or those will be that will be filled with minus 32 32,767 indicating these are values where values are missing or just filled so that their consistency is maintained like that like that you have another variable called as v10 velo uh, velocity the north south velocity actually v means north south velocity here at the 10 meter level surface okay and then this is actually t2m meaning uh, to a temperature at 2 meters from the surface the unit is in Kelvin so we have in Kelvin and, and the scale factor and offset factor and everything are done it's as of now not a big deal and everything so it's not a problem and then what you'll have is that you have something called as AL which is nothing but your albedo your surface albedo the full strong full name is surface albedo and uh, the thing to be noticed is that the thing to be noticed is that uh, the units the units of these are the u10 are time latitude and longitude the x axis is time y axis is longitude and the z axis is long sorry y axis is latitude and z axis is longitude for u10 similarly for v10 uh, time latitude longitude for t2 t2m it's time latitude longitude and similarly time latitude longitude and all okay and the shape of these arrays these are actually three dimensional arrays with 32 rows, 8, 181 columns, and, a uh, and 360 levels or layers, you can say. Okay, that's about it. Okay, now we printed all the values. Okay, now the uh, printed the values. Now let's extract the extract the variables. Now to extract it, follow a line condition like this. Copy this, and I'll paste it over here. And I press enter. It may take some time, and it works out fine. Now I'll explain what's going on. Now uh, the syntax is okay. NP array within brackets NC dot NC file dot variables, and when that you wrote something like latitude, and then followed by this colon symbol, and with the data type to be NP uh, dot NP dot float thirty two. Meaning, what it says is that okay, extract the key. Uh, I mean since NC file is actually an order dictionary it's a is a net CDF it's a net CDF data data set but it's still it's a form of an order dictionary so what I'm going to do is that I'm going to extract the key colors latitude with its full dimension using this option over here I'm getting the extract in the full dimension with all its data types to be uh, float 32 because the data type that is used over here as float 32 will use the same Okay, we'll be extracting this entire 
I, mat, entire matrix entire matrix using this command over here and then what you're going to do is that uh, we're going to pass this as a numpy array so that lat becomes a numpy array lat becomes a numpy array so that's what it means here extract a variable named latitude from the netcdf object as a numpy array having all its entries as real numbers of type flow 32 i mean 32 bit real numbers the numpy the numpy the numpy array's name is list this entire thing which is extracted its name is called as lat it's actually called as lat similarly you can extract uh, all the values in it like lon t u v t a l correspondingly to longitude time u10 v10 t2 m a l x everything the, pro the thing you have to keep in mind is that if these and the names of these entries are false wrong when you enter them then it will throw a lot of error so be cautious about what's going on over there other than that it's fine okay so let this way if i copy all this if i copy all this and paste it over here okay the values are extracted these are 3d arrays so everything so the values are extracted so not a problem okay if you want you can open all this and you can cut the shape and everything and look at it as to how what's going on you can just change the axis and everything to look at it in 2d in a two-dimensional manner and everything so that's about it and now after this it's just plain data manipulation right so that is quite easy okay now the one th one more thing is uh saving data to saving the writing data in netcd files okay now that is good but that's a little more tricky okay uh, Writing contents in netcd files is actually a real uh, pain because you have to do a lot of formatting, form groups and everything. Okay, so what I'd recommend you is that just go to Google and type something like writing data to, to netcd files using netcd4 in Python. If I press enter, if my net, I guess my net is hopefully working. I I guess it's not. I suppose. So anyway, I mean I don't know whether this net is working or not. Anyway, you type something like this, you will get a lot of links. So you will get a lot of links. Okay, that says how to work with netcd files and everything. Yeah, my net is out. My net is out. Anyway. You guys do that. You guys do that, and uh, you guys will have a lot of information as to how to work with them, and that's about. And that will help you clear your cl clarifications. Okay. Now, in the next tutorial, we look at contour plots. Since we have extracted these data, most of them are two-dimensional, three-dimensional data. Now, in the next tutorial, let's plot them. Let's uh, get a two-dimensional. Let's make a. Uh, let's make a plot of all these to see what's happening. Okay. Now, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next tutorial. So, take care.